Hi everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe, and today we're going to talk about Deck Drive Manager, a tool that I've written that allows you to copy Steam installed games from your PC over to your Steam Deck. Now, in this case, we're going to be copying the games from the PC's hard drives onto the Steam Deck's micro SD card. So you're probably saying to yourself, yeah, but Shane, it's, it's EXT4 and Windows won't read that. That's actually true. However, a neat little tool called Linux File Systems for Windows will indeed allow you to insert your DEX micro SD card, which is EXT4, and mount it as a drive inside of Windows. Once we have that, we can use Deck Drive Manager to move, or copy in this case, any one of our PC installed games onto that card, plug it into the Steam Deck, and have it immediately appear as an available game. How fantastic is that? So how does it work? Well, first off, obviously, you will need to have a Linux file system for Windows installed. Uh, we're not going to really go into great detail. I already have a video about that, so I'll put a link to that up. But just a couple of things that I have found since I made that video that it's probably worth your time. Go into settings and turn off mount automatically. This is going to, this could cause problems, right? Go ahead and turn off mount automatically. And then when you insert your micro SD card, you will then have to physically mount it yourself before it will appear as a drive listed here in Deck Drive Manager. So why would you want to do that? Well, it's, uh, it's sort of for safety and it's also to sort of help you remember that you need to unmount it when you're done. So we're going to go ahead and click mount. And when you click mount, make sure that you have it in read write mode. You check this box saying set default permissions and make sure it's 777 and hit mount. We now have a K drive that represents our micro SD card from the deck. Great. So if I refresh my drive list, it automatically picked up the EXT4 drive in my set of, obviously I have a lot of drives, right? And only one of them was EXT4, so it found the first one and selected it. If you had more than one, it would pick the first one on the list. We have 115 gigabytes of free space, it is EXT4, and we have two games installed, which is currently is Vampire Survivors and Murder by Numbers, obviously something very small, easy to copy. Now from here, uh, with Deck Drive Manager, we could actually make room by deleting games off of this drive. We could do that. But let's let's start from the beginning. So we start off by choosing which one of your hard drives has your Steam games on it. This should automatically populate with all of the drives that would have Steam games on it. When you select the drive that has Steam games, it'll walk that folder and find all of the Steam games that you have in the D drive in this case, right? So you can see I've got quite a few games installed there. Go to my G drive. You can see I have quite a few things installed here as well. So all we have to do is start queuing them up. So you can, new with version uh, 0.7b, you can double click. So let's add, let's see, what do I have down here? Let's add Neon Chrome. So we can double click it now. We used to have to click it and hit add to queue, but you can just double click it now. Uh, I'm looking for something else that's like really, really small. Okay, well, we can leave the G drive and go to the D drive. Notice our queue over here stays filled. Let's see if I can find something else that's relatively small that we can do. Uh, Pac-Man 256 would be good. Um, not RetroArch. Okay, so we got a couple items on the list. Let's, that's enough, I think, for now. Uh, so let's take a look. So this will tell us where the game was located, what the Steam ID is, and the approximate size in gigabytes. We'll get a total for our queue right down here, showing less than one gigabyte, which of course does not supersede the amount of free space that we have. So we could begin to copy right now. So what happens if you try to add stuff that's too big, too much, too much space, right? We do our best here to, um, to stop that. So let's say we add Spider-Man to the list. Uh, that's a good 65, and then we're going to go ahead and add, I got something else huge in here, right? Uh, let's see, what do I have in here? I got something else big, right? Homefront Revolution, there's another 60. Okay, so we've exceeded our free space, copy button is tagged out, and it says your queue is too big. So of course, we can remove items from the queue to 
make this a little more palatable. Of course, you can do a one button click to remove everything in the queue. So now we have something that's under a gigabyte. So that should copy pretty quickly. And once again, uh, we are copying Decay. It already has two games installed. So let's take a look at a couple of these options down here because these are new to version 0.7b. First off is this is an external deck drive, not a micro SD. So if you were wanting to install games into an external hard drive that you plug into the USB-C port or a USB port, it behaves a little bit differently than the micro SD card that you would put into the micro SD card slot. So external drive support is brand new. Um, we've done some testing and it seems to be fine. Essentially, when you check that, it's going to add another folder called Steam Library and put the Steam apps in there. Now, this is a micro SD card for the deck, not an external drive. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that unchecked. But if you were moving to a large external drive that's not a micro SD, then you would probably wanna check that and make sure that that Steam folder hierarchy gets created. Export shown text files to the root of the drive after copy. So essentially what happens is, even though that we've set some permissions when we mounted the disk, when that drive goes back into the Steam Deck, it could have some permission problems. So in order to fix that, there's a chone or change ownership script, or in this case, it's a single command that you're going to run inside of the console in order to restore full writability to that card. It used to be you had to do that on your own. If I were to check this box, it's going to write a text file that I could then open on my Steam Deck, copy and paste into the console and run, which will remove any sort of read-write problems that that drive may have had based on the folder structure and everything else. You can also create that on demand now as well. So you don't have to do a copy operation. Let's just say you did a copy and it's like, oh, I forgot to check the box. Just hit create now and it'll go ahead and write that folder for you. And we'll look at that file in just a minute. Uh, obviously, you, there's a tool here to launch uh, Linux file systems for Windows, your default Steam location, and brand new to version 7, there's a play sound when copy is complete. File copies inside of .NET WinForms, the, uh, the language and tool set that I'm using to build this, does not have asynchronous file copy, which means that when a big file is copying, this interface sort of locks up and you can't really see what your copy progress is. Uh, so in, basically it's fire and forget and then this thing will play a sound when the uh, copy is complete. And I even give you the opportunity, you can change that sound to whatever you want. Just copy a WAV file over the done.wav file as part of deck drive manager and you can make that sound, do whatever you want. Output log here will show you what's going on. If you're ever curious as to what's going on with the application, you can see I've been working in this before this video. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's telling you what sort of things that it's found and maybe something interesting for those of you who are more uh, technically oriented. One of the really nice things about this is we'll also tell you the start time and total copy time. So if you do a large copy operation, let's say 50 gigabytes, and you're curious how long it took, this window will tell you when the copy operation is done, how long the copy took, so that you can sort of, um, you know, plan for uh, the same types and sizes. I would give an estimate, but every read, every card write speed is a little bit different. Otherwise I could. Um, so the best thing I can do is give you a percentage based on the file uh, count and size. It's what we can do. So we're all kind of done here. I mean, uh, the only other thing I can mention is this copy workshop mods. If your game has a Steam installed workshop mod, not something you installed with some third party tool, copying workshop mods should bring them over. I don't use workshop mods, but those who do assure me that it does work as implemented. So you do have that option available. Okay, so enough of this hemming and hawing. Let's hit the copy. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, the copy operation itself is not very exciting, right? So what you'll see here is the current file that it's copying, a visual progress indicator letting you know how far along you are, and then something a little more uh, numerically oriented for those that see through numbers. Obviously, this is not a big copy job. This is like one gigabyte, well, less than uh, 0.25 gigabytes. There's that sound I was talking about. And you'll see right here, that the, uh, it, there was a start time and a finish time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's a finish time and a total time, right? So here's when it finished and here's how long it took. It took 18 seconds. Not too shabby. I mean, listen, there's small games. Grand Theft Auto here being 106 gigabytes, we would be here for a long time. 
that's really it. I mean, it is a glorified file copier, and you're probably saying, well, Shane, couldn't I do this myself if I just had Linux file systems? I could go find these folders. It's a little more complicated than that. And the reason I say that is because um, the drive actually has, uh, there's a couple of other little files that need to come along with it. It's complicated, but you can read all about it at the website. I don't want to, I don't want to get into great detail on the technical aspects, but this does do a little bit more than just what that file manager would do. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I promise we could take a look at the, um, or was that the K drive? All right, so if we take a look at the K drive, here is what it holds. It holds the um, Steam Apps folder that was created. You can see that's today. And if you go in here, these are the ACF files that were copied over for you. This is what signals Steam uh, OS that these files are installed. If these weren't copied over, Steam wouldn't know that they were installed and you'd have to go and add them and then it would have to go and discover files. It's a huge pain. And if we go in here, here are the, uh, there's the two games that we had previously installed and the two games that we added later. Okay, and that's pretty much it, right? So the games copy over, the manifest files copy over. Uh, the one last thing we need to do now, we're not quite done yet. This is one of the reasons why there's a launch button here <laughs> is to bring this up to the front. You must unmount the drive. You must unmount the drive before you take this card out and put it back into your Steam Deck. So we'll go ahead and hit unmount. It'll take a moment, and then once it uh, shows that it's no longer mounted, you can go ahead and remove the card and stick it uh, back in your Steam Deck, and you're you're good to go. You're ready. So um, not only uh, not only do you have the ability to um, to prep a card prior to getting your Steam Deck, right? Because we could get this card all prepped up and ready to go before the Steam Deck even got here. Uh, or you can go ahead and extend your current Steam Deck card. Once you're ready to install some large games, you can just go ahead and grab them off your PC and move them over. Listen, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Deck Drive Manager version 0.7b. Uh, very exciting stuff. I'm, I'm excited to be able to provide this for you guys. Uh, please like the video, subscribe. You guys know what to do. Hit the notification bell. It really helps out the channel. I'm trying to grow a few more subscribers here, a few more subscribers there. Uh, will all help out. All right. Thanks so much again for watching. I am Shane Armonroe, the developer of Deck Drive Manager, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.